So I tend to categorize exercises according to mass and acceleration. However, with the lateral raise, it's useful to think of it as a lever. And in this case, it is a third class lever. A third class lever is when you have the fulcrum, the axis point, and then the force between the resistance. So in the case of the lateral raise for, for the medial deltoid, uh, the, the axis or the fulcrum is, is the, the shoulder joint, uh, the force produced by the lateral head, and then the resistance will be the dumbbell. And the the reason that this is important is because this movement has a lot of variation in exercise form and this is because the glenohumeral joint is a, it allows a lot of freedom of movement because it's a ball and socket joint. The lateral raise is abduction of the glenohumeral joint. The further away the dumbbell is the harder it will be because the resistance arm is longer. So you may have seen people using a, a really straight arm for the lateral raise. If you use a straight arm compared to a really emphasized 90 degrees lateral raise, the straight arm with the same weight will feel harder. You can think of the straight arm having a greater torque because you are increasing the length of the moment arm. And so immediately what I would say is the problem with a very emphasized 90 degree lateral raise is the internally rotating position as well as having the dumbbell in front of you as a starting position. This can put stress on the rotator cuff and ro rotator cuff injuries are very common and safety is always the most important part of any lift. And with an overemphasized straight arm lateral raise, if you lock out the joint, this can also create stress on the joint. And so whilst in this video, I'm not gonna tell you one specific way to do this movement. There are many ways you can do it, but I want you to take this information and apply it to you. As long as you adjust your intensity according to the torque of you, uh, created by your form. And when we talk about intensity, we're talking about the, the amount of weight used, how heavy the dumbbell is. I would recommend that you use the number repetitions method of setting your reps for this exercise. Uh, the number repetitions method is very basically, I'm gonna do eight reps, I need to use a weight that I can lift for eight reps, but not for nine reps. Now this may sound simple, but actually it requires experience to know what that weight is and to not cheat yourself. You want eight intense repetitions. If my arm is straight, I will perhaps drop the weight due to the increased torque as it will feel harder. As opposed to a slight bend in the elbow, I will, I will be able to increase the load and then the 90 degrees overemphasized lateral raise, I can increase the load even more. And so the most common way of doing a lateral raise is with a slight bend in the elbow, which I think is a very good way of doing this exercise. And so with any exercise, it's important to think about the strength curve of the movement. Now, essentially what this means is at what point of the lift do you feel that the tension with a common lateral raise, you'll feel the tension around about the midpoint of the lift. And so this is where I would suggest using variations. For example, the lean away lateral raise, holding onto a firm surface, leaning away from that surface and performing the lateral raise will increase the tension at the top end of the exercise. Now, similarly, using a cable machine or resistance bands will further manipulate the strength curve so you are forcing tension at different points of the lift. If you use a low cable, you are uh, specifically putting tension at the bottom end of the lift. And so if you are just using dumbbells with a standard lateral raise, perhaps you are missing out on creating tension through several parts of the movement. So most definitely consider using cables and resistance bands. And so Christian Thibardeau, he recommends with the cable, even using a starting position of behind your back. Now he stresses that you must have a good posture. We're having a starting position behind your back, as Mr. Thibardeau says, will increase that uh, stretch on the deltoid, which therefore will increase the recruitment of motor units. Another important point with the lateral raise is the body position, the starting position. Now you have people such as Dr. John Rusin who will recommend a slight anterior tilt, a slight bend in the knees as your starting position. The reason for this is to avoid the momentum and the potential for swinging if you have that completely upright 
body position. Sean Nalewani also recommends a slight anterior tilt if you are familiar with him and his YouTube channel. What I would describe this as is a strong mechanical position. Now there are arguments to suggest an upright body position. Again, there's lots of debate, but most certainly using a slight anterior tilt, a slight bend of the elbow, stopping at 90 degrees, 90 degrees, that is a very good way of performing this exercise. Whenever you have an internally rotated exercise, there is the potential for rotator cuff injury. Does this mean that you should not do internally rotated exercises? Well, no it doesn't, but you need to make sure that your form is very good. So this is why with the lateral raise, people will stop at 90 degrees. The reason that people Generally, you, it wouldn't be advised to go higher than that. It's because of the p potential uh, rotator cuff impingement. Now, you can go higher than that. If you're an experienced lifter, you can go a little higher than 90 degrees to increase the contraction. But generally speaking, that 90 degrees range uh, is a safe range where you're decreasing the risk of injury. Another thing you can do if you are worried about rotator cuff injury, lift with the thumb outwards. Now, there are people who will argue against this because because you are increasing the involvement of the anterior deltoid in this movement. And these are fair arguments. There are lots of arguments with exercises. What you need to do is apply it to you and, all, and find the best of both worlds. Perhaps it's not going to be perfect, but you need to match exercises to your body type, your history of injury, the, the length of your limbs, etc. And I, I've seen world-class coaches use the thumbs out approach. So by no means is this wrong. It's just different. There are negatives to it. There are advantages to it. I'm James Linker. This is Shredder Sports Science. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.